It's Wednesday, October 15th, 2025. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for being part of this weather community. The next several days, the next about week and a half, this is what we're gonna be tracking, that strong tropical wave that will work its way toward the Caribbean and development is likely out of that down the road. Now in this video, I wanna go model by model, a little bit different and really show you what could develop right in the Caribbean and the chances that that area lifts up to the north. Plus, I wanna show you what's trying to develop near Guatemala and Mexico, that big spin near Bermuda, trying to lift closer to the Atlantic region of Canada, new systems with storms sweeping through parts of the US. And watching this, this is Lorenzo still technically, although that's really falling apart. So here we are in the Caribbean here's the spot to watch now the good thing about this I like to keep things in good perspective on this channel I do this channel for safety uh, not hype or anything like that as you well know uh, this is so far out there which I like because that gives us a lot of time just to watch it so over the next several days I'll have more and more of a feel of what could develop and where it could go. So I appreciate you subscribing so you can get those updates as we go forward together. Now the water temperatures we know are so warm throughout much of the Gulf, in through the uh, Caribbean, back through the uh, Bahamas. A lot of these waters have been rather untouched. It's been a season. Sometimes seasons uh, just have these patterns and it's been a season. Uh, almost everything's been making the curve. This area though looks more likely to move off toward the west and eventually encounter some of these water temperatures. Now the next few maps I trust your judgment. They're no doubt going to change. So please uh, take them. Um We'll just keep them in perspective, right? They're going to change, but I like to also show you everything. So uh, we'll go model by model here. The American model late next week is taking that tropical wave that I just showed you near the coast of Africa, working it into the Caribbean, and then developing it into a hurricane. Now, the American model is usually uh, more of the, uh, it's uh, generally the most aggressive model, trying to develop these things, sometimes a little bit too quickly, but it is showing something developing. And I'll show you this model as you hang with me in this video. It is showing something developing right in the uh, Caribbean. Now this time of year, you get the fronts to the north, they can grab something and pull it to the north. So if something does develop, it can eventually swing to the north. That's usually the uh, pattern we see later in October into November. The European model keeps something uh, moving into the Caribbean, keeping it kind of weak, but as it does lift it to the north eventually, it also has it developing into a strong tropical storm or a hurricane by late next week. Now, as I I mentioned, I trust your judgment. This is no doubt going to change. When I join you tomorrow, uh, this area may be over here and maybe over here, and it may just uh, say, hey, it's just going to be some rain. It's not going to be a big deal, right? Uh, but this is what the European model is showing. Let's go continue model by model. This here is the uh, Canadian model, and you can see this has faster development. It has uh, it developing into a tropical storm early next week, so about just five uh, or six days from now, uh, trying to develop this area into a tropical storm closer to the Eastern Caribbean. So you see some of the differences, but at the same time, so far, these three models all show some sort of development, where it goes, where exactly it develops, uh, as you know, at this point, really hard to uh, tell, but that's the Canadian model. Here's the Icon German model, and it's showing a tropical storm. So the last two models I just showed you, tropical storm, not hurricane, but it's showing some sort of tropical storm in the Central Caribbean. Most do eventually take whatever tries to develop to the north, but let's see, because this season, we've also seen dry air in wind shear panning out, right? That, that's been kind of winning. It's not only been a season of everything curving, because sometimes patterns get stuck, but there's been a lot of wind shear. That's been a good thing, those winds really knocking down these systems. But these four models are showing some development. Now, here's the behind the scenes look at the American model. I wanna show, or excuse me, the European model. Then I wanna show you the American model and the Google DeepMind. You can see here, this is by the time we work our way into Monday, uh, showing that strong tropical wave, not developed though. The European model has it not developing yet as it works its way into the Caribbean. But that would also mean heavy pockets of rain for us in parts of the Eastern Caribbean. Deeper into next week, 
that's when the European model starts to show more signs of development. So this is late next week, so a week and a half from now, just what I showed you. And then whatever this area is, the European model says, hey, this may develop and maybe develop into a hurricane as it lifts to the north. We'll see. Uh, we'll see all the other factors. There's a zillion things out there, as we know, uh, well know. Yes, the water temperatures are warm, but as I mentioned, the dry air, the wind shear, all of that sort of thing, that could kind of rip these uh, areas apart. Here's the uh, Google DeepMind. Also, like the European model, not showing quick development. Remember, I just showed you the Canadian model. That's the one that shows this developing into a tropical storm in the Eastern Caribbean. But the European model and the Google DeepMind are showing this area sliding all the way into the central, if not Western Caribbean, just kind of hanging out and then eventually developing, kind of later development, late next week. We'll see which models are right, but you know, I don't just look at the models. I mentioned all the stuff going on in the environment. We've seen the models be off this season. I've been giving you the heads up on that in some spots. Now here's the American model. Here are those fronts to the north. I want to cover this as well. Uh, these fronts that will bring us some additional rain. So hang with me. And then watching this spot here that will try to develop. I want to show you the computer models on this if you're watching uh, near parts of Central America and Mexico as this area tries to develop. But as we work our way into the weekend, we'll be watching this area right in through here this is the spot, all the models showing this at that point, this strong tropical wave approaching. That's why I mentioned, if you do subscribe, you'll get the updates. And by the time we get into the weekend, I'll have a good handle on exactly where this is going to go and if it will develop. And then you see here, by the time we get into uh, Sunday and Monday, this strong tropical wave moves in. And even if it's not developed at this point, and most of the models, except for the Canadian model, are not developing at this point, we're going to get some heavier rain that could be a flood threat. That's what we'll be watching island by island. Then as we work our way forward, the American model by the time we get into Tuesday. So this is six days from now. And as I mentioned, we know this is going to change some, but it really starts to develop. It, watching the fronts up to the north uh, by the middle and end of next week, it tries to develop this area into a tropical storm or hurricane. And then you watch the fronts uh, as uh, we get into next week, because as these fronts sweep by, they could drag whatever this is up to the uh, north. So it's really going to hinge on the timing and strength of these fronts. But you can see the American model, as I showed you a few minutes ago, does try to develop something in the Central Caribbean. Meanwhile, this behaving like most of the storms this season, here we are in the Caribbean, Bahamas, uh, get over toward the Maritimes, uh, east coast of the U.S. This is Lorenzo. That sucker should be uh, falling apart rather soon. So Karen briefly formed in the North Atlantic for like a day. Uh, Lorenzo's still out there. Melissa's the next name. So this area off the coast of Africa, if that is the next uh, name storm, wherever that may be, the next name on the list is Melissa. Now watching the fronts, and I want to keep an eye on this area here, then swing up to the north, as promised, uh, Canada, U.S., watching uh, Bermuda. Here's the extra rain again, scattered areas of rain with that system near Bermuda, uh, helping to uh, kind of leave some of that moisture around. And watching this spot as well, that will be trying to develop, keeping an eye on Guatemala and southern Mexico. As we work our way into tomorrow, you can see kind of the tail end of a front, watching out for scattered areas of rain. If we get some rain, we'll get some downpours, just a higher chance Jamaica, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, even Puerto Rico, rain chance bumping up. Watching out for some development out of this area, could develop into a tropical storm on the eastern Pacific side. And this is what I'll be monitoring to see how close this area gets to a land. Meanwhile, watching the areas of rain and storms that will be around Costa Rica, Panama included, but again, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, and the DR, and then swing it back anywhere from my uh, Tiga, Barbuda, uh, Guadalupe, Dominica. The rain chance does bump up as expected as we go through the end of the week. Now this area here, this is the southern coast of Mexico. Whatever tries to develop will be very close to the coast. So I'll be watching that for two things. One, the flood potential. Then two, if this area does get stronger, it could eventually hook in. So I'll be watching that southern coast of Mexico, as you can see, got you covered watching that. Now here's that big spin still hanging out near Bermuda. There's the trailing front, still bring those showers back toward parts of the Bahamas and uh, into uh, Cuba. This has been just kind of spinning around for days. This is by the time uh, we get into uh, tomorrow. So seeing a few showers squeaking into northern New England, watching Nova Scotia for some of that. Here comes that next system uh, working its way through Manitoba, headed toward the Great Lakes. And I want to show you how this evolves. Watch this spin here. Look how this is just kind of rotating around. Not tropical in no nature, but it does lift a little bit more to the uh, north. Here's that next system swinging right through there. Then as we go out in time, this here is by the time we get into Saturday, 
excuse me, Saturday, you could see some of the moisture trying to feed closer to the Avalon Peninsula. Here's that system, Ontario, Quebec, uh, Quebec South. This will bring some storms, even some moisture for Louisiana getting pulled in from the Gulf. But these could bring some bigger storms. And then British Columbia, Pacific Northwest, another system moving in. And you see how active it is this weekend. There's the spin near uh, Newfoundland and the Avalon Peninsula. It could see some showers, most of it just offshore, but the higher seas. Here's that next system, watching out for the pot possibility of severe weather out of this and then a new system riding in to the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia. Very active pattern, uh, be it if we're across the Caribbean, the Atlantic as a whole, and then swinging back to the north. But with that spin sitting out there for days and days, the Atlantic waters stay a mess for two reasons. One, we have that spin, and then two, as we get down the road, we'll be watching that strong tropical wave approaching the Caribbean. So this is by Friday and just swinging into the weekend. You see the Atlantic waters staying rough. Uh, parts of the uh, U.S. back through the Bahamas. And there's that new tropical wave that will be getting closer as we work our way into Sunday. So you can see in the uh, Eastern Caribbean, the Atlantic passageways really cranking up a notch. They'll be on the dangerous side with some choppy to rough seas as we work our way Sunday into Monday with that tropical wave that will be approaching. Meanwhile, beautiful weather, cooler weather, uh, parts of the Southern United States, uh, Georgia, Florida. Meanwhile, those scattered showers back through the Bahamas. Some of that heavy still, parts of Cuba, Jamaica, Cayman Islands. As I've been highlighting us in the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and Cuba the last few days, even Haiti and the DR, we're going to still get some downpours. Some of us won't get it, but you see the white shading showing up. We'll have some totals over 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain. That's going to happen in some of the same spots that we've already had some of the rain, so we need to be mindful of some of that flooding. So active throughout Jamaica, even back through Puerto Rico as we get these fronts. Well, kind of a front. We're seeing the tail end of that system uh, that's up to the north just spilling over some of the moisture. And I mentioned anywhere from Antigua, Barbuda South, you see some spotty showers that could give us some three-day totals over over 75 millimeters of rain, even a higher upwards of 100, 125 in spots, just seeing how some of that moisture kind of builds back toward Martinique, uh, St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada, uh, St. Vincent of the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, scattered showers, not as much Suriname, Guyana, Venezuela, some showers. And then we swing back here, those heavy pockets, still the flooding, but watching this moisture, this tropical moisture, we'll see how this kind of plays into everything across uh, southern Mexico. Uh, meanwhile, as I mentioned, right through here, not a lot, still watching some of those uh, spotty showers kind of from Mexico lifting up toward the north. But this is where we have that autumn weather that has been in place. So you see how we stay active in Jamaica. The rain chance is going to be running at 60% the next few days and still elevated across the Cayman Islands. Uh, we're looking at a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain watching out for some downpours some flooding will be possible a 40 percent chance in Trinidad and Tobago so we're going to have some scattered areas of rain need to monitor some isolated pockets of flooding tomorrow and Friday we're up to a 40 percent chance in Barbados and a 40 percent chance of passing showers the next three days in St. Lucia next two days in Grenada 30 percent but up to a 40 percent chance on Friday tomorrow and Friday St. Vincent and the Grenadines rain chance will be at 40 percent you can see Mark Martinique, how bumps up tomorrow, uh, the tail end of that system moving by with that higher chance of rain. That includes Dominica. The rain chance will be higher, so we could see some higher rain totals as some of that moisture pulls in, and we'll do that again in Guadalupe. Rain chance 60% uh, tomorrow and a 50% chance on Friday. We swing back toward Antigua, Barbuda. Rain chance uh, with the tail end of that area sweeping by goes higher tomorrow. A 70% chance, a 60% chance tomorrow. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, and a 60% percent chance in Guilla and St. Bart's tomorrow and Friday. It's not all day stuff though, so I, I want to point that out, but we'll see some showers that a higher possibility of them sweeping through St. Martin, Saban, Stacia, the same thing tomorrow and Friday. And then we do that again in Puerto Rico. You see the rain chance goes up. Areas of flooding will be possible in Puerto Rico as we go throughout the uh, end of the week. And that rain chance building as well. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, 50% chance tomorrow and a 70% chance on Friday. Bahamas scattered about. Rain chance has gone down some, but still scattered about. Turks and Caicos uh, with that system up by Bermuda clipping us by with some of those uh, spotty showers. And that rain chance higher tomorrow and Friday in the Dominican Republic. Watching out for the possibility of flooding. Same thing in Haiti. Tropical downpours, the mudslide threat, and watching some of those rivers across Haiti. Meanwhile, Belize, our rain chance 30% today and a 40 percent chance tomorrow and staying at about a 30 to 40 percent chance Aruba, Carousel, and Bonaire. We'll watch how 
Everything will eventually build next week with this new tropical wave that will be sliding into the uh, Caribbean. Guyana rain chance at about 50% on Friday and staying on the minimal side in Suriname does bump up a little bit by the time we get to the end of the week. Scattered areas of rain and thunderstorms swinging back through Cuba. That 70 to 80% chance holding on. Costa Rica and Panama, same thing. Nicaragua, the next two days, a 70% chance. Monitoring even some areas of flooding. Uh, parts of Honduras, rain chance holding roughly around 50%, 70 to 80% chance Guatemala and El Salvador and watching that area just to the south trying to uh, develop tropically. Meanwhile, Mexico City rain chance down to about 20%, 40 to 50% chance across the Yucatan Peninsula. Northern Colombia, 50 to 60% chance of rain. Northern Venezuela, a 50 to 60% chance the next few days. And with that spit around near Bermuda, high seas, some gusty winds, and at times we'll see some of that rain trying to uh, clip through. So that's strong tropical wave off the coast of Africa. We'll start to see some development that will be possible next week. That's what we'll be tracking together. Those warm water temperatures are a concern, but we'll see how it shakes out with the dry air in the wind shear in the fronts up to the north that could eventually pull this area up to the north. So plenty to cover and hurricane season goes all the way through the end of November. So thank you for watching this video, hanging out for a little while. We'll be going through your comments throughout the day. Have a wonderful day ahead.